Yep. I've popped the turbo. And the little pipe in the manual boost controller popped off the turbo. I drove it very carefully back because I realised that was my fault, that the little fixing I put on the turbo wasn't quite enough and it little popped off, which meant it was boosting way more than it should have done, as you would have just seen in this clip. Whilst I was about to have a day off, no longer. I'm now putting a stock turbo on. It does mean that now the EGR issue we had has been resolved because I've been able to get the EGR off this manifold, thanks to Mickey Callitz. Uh, I went and got a turbo, basically. It does mean that now the EGR issue we had has been resolved because I've been able to get the EGR off this manifold, thanks to Mickey Callitz. Uh, I went and got a turbo, basically. So yeah, so I went and got one for Mickey Callitz. Thank you very much. That block has come in much use for many people. So I've cleaned up the flange there. I've cleaned up the flange on this side. Got the gasket from it as well, just in case this one's a bit dead. EGR gave him off lovely, so we've put the blank on there. Turbo isn't in great condition, but considering what I've got on the car currently, it's in pretty good condition. So, let's whip the turbo off and see how bad it is. So, I've been recording some of this, as hopefully you've just been uh, observing. Um, turbo, all the bolts are off, subframe is over there. Over there. Ooh, I want my zoom. Uh, so subframe seemed the easiest way forward there. Uh, all the bolts are off. One is really tricky because the EGR. So you have to just use spanners for that one. So it's now loose. Now, if this would just drop out, lovely. However, uh, they had the insight to put these really long studs on them, of which some have come out. So that means I've got to try and slide the turbo back somehow to get it off. That is your biggest issue really, hence the subframe removal. Notice the distance I've got between there and there, and I've got a stud that long. So I'm going to jack the engine up at a certain point, fulcrum sort of point, to get it to rotate on its mount and give us some space and the turbo should drop out. Just like that. Two turbos on my table, one's broken and one's just very old. So, let's try and get you in and good and proper. Hopefully you can see the huge gap between the edge of the fins and the wall of the turbo, and they're all kind of curled over. That's a poorly turbo. Don't know if I can, uh, on camera, on my own, let's get it spinning, sort of in my hand for you, but still spins fine and you know what it doesn't even feel worn out it just it obviously just for a moment overspun and absolutely destroyed the walls and the fins of the turbo there's not even oh yeah there we go there's the play in the shaft so things I'm going to do next I'm going to switch this oil line onto this turbo uh, this, interestingly enough, is an IHI turbo. I thought it was a GT15, but an IH, IHI turbo. Supposedly one of the better ones, actually. It actually, as you can see, it's just... I don't know. Is it slightly bigger? Don't know. Anyway, what, what can we do? It's done now. Let's hope that this flange matches, so we're going to switch the stainless downpipe uh, 
fans there to there. I'm going to fit the manual boost control onto this turbo ahead of time and clip it on nice and tight so that doesn't pop off again. And was there anything else? No, that was it. That's all I need to do. Um, and then we'll get this swinging up there in. Uh, you might have seen on the video, it's actually quite tricky because the studs do prevent it. So I pulled all the studs out but one and then was able to sort of manipulate it around the last one. So I'm going to use a toilet. That's definitely toilet time. And then clean up the flange on the car. Choose which gasket to use. Prepare this turbo and slap her in. Boom. Boost time. <laughs>